Hi everybody, Jeff Garage Maker Guy here. And we're gonna start putting some finish on the foam. So in the previous video, we went over cutting the foam, gluing the foam layers, building up your, your layers to the, the elevation that you need, and then doing the initial um, carving. So, or sculpting or whatever you want to call it. So we kind of got the general shape um, that we want and um, it's very rough cut but we're going to be using uh, Hot Wire Foam Factory's um, all-purpose foam coat and uh, I'm going to start because it's the first time I've used this product uh, or any foam finishing. This is the first time I've actually really worked with foam uh, on a you know larger scale than just one small piece. So. Um, I took out that center island there and that's what I'm going to work on today. That's going to be my, my guinea pig for um, the foam coat. So this is the piece that goes in there and all I've done is I've, I've rough sanded it with 80 grit um, to, to smooth out some of the sharp edges and kind of at, you know, take off a little more material because this foam coat you can apply I think you can you can do multiple coats. Each coat can be up to three eighths of an inch thick, so it's going to fill a lot of gaps. I might not even need to use any sculpt the mold or or additional plaster, which is absolutely fantastic. The other thing that you can do with this foam coating, um, you can go to their Hot Wire Foam Factory site, and I'll I'll put a link in the description, and you can learn all about it. There's several different kinds, several additives you can do, but the one additive that I really like is really simple. It's just some concrete um, pigment. In this case I, I picked some um, a liquid and uh, it, it'll, it'll change the color of it to whatever you, you want. Um, what that does is that prevents you from having to paint all of this stuff like this. I had to paint all of that. I had to paint underneath all of that. And by dyeing the foam coat color um, to whatever you want you can once the stuff dries you can just start putting your uh, grass down and your your bushes rocks and whatever else so um, I think that's a uh, that's a big time saver so I'm gonna start mixing this stuff up I'm gonna try this one piece to see how it looks and uh, we'll go from there okay so it's three parts of this to um, one part water, that's the basic. It's not uh, set in stone. You know, make it mix it a little thinner, mix it a little thicker. Um, but since this is my first time working with this, we're just gonna go with, um, just gonna do the, 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 the recommended ratio. I think we'll go with, uh, That's about a half a cup, so I'm actually going to want to go So that's a it's one cup I said this is just a just a, a new experiment, it's the first time I've ever used anything like this So, uh, and then we're going to need a cup, water now this is just some real fine um, sand. Um, I bought this. This is a uh, uh, decorative sand because um, I didn't want to buy a 10 pound bag. So this is just to add some texture um, to it. I'm going to try this. We'll see how it goes. I'll decide whether I'm going to use this or um, not. All right. So. Well, let's read the directions, shall we? Not that I really want to. It says, mix one part water to three parts foam coat. Thicken or thin as desired, do not over mix. Um, it's settling in the dry ingredients, mix before blah, blah, blah. Okay, applying, use a trial brush or a hopper gun as thick as 3 eighths. Set time is 10 to 20 minutes, uh, depending on the air temperature. Dries hard in 12 to 24 hours. 
The finish is sandable and paintable, and it cleans up with water. So, that is one of the reasons why I picked the all-purpose over the exterior, because um, the exterior, I don't believe, is sandable, um, or, uh, and why I'm not using a bunch of additives, because I want to be able to paint, and I want to be able to sand it, um, maybe. Uh, anyway, let's just go with this. So I've got 10 to 20 minutes to work with this stuff. So we put in one cup of the um, foam coat. So we're going to want to do a third of a cup for the water, which gives us our 3 to 1 ratio. stuff is thick, but it's supposed to be. So it's kind of like plaster. Um, okay. I'm going to drop a little bit of this pigment in here. Probably don't need much. That's probably more than enough. Let's see how dark that looks. Wow, that made it really, really dark. So, probably going to go with a different pigment, but this is just to experiment and see what this stuff is all about. Looks like brownie mix. I think I'll skip licking the spoon on this one. All right. So I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's just basically a bunch of paste. It looks like plaster, but it's not drying as fast, which is really nice. So I guess we just start slopping this stuff on and Hope it does what we want it to do. So, I'm going to go through a lot of this. I think uh, one of those three pound containers does like eh, a little over probably about three square feet if you're putting it on thick. So we're just going to work it. I have to be careful along this outside edge because I have a pretty tight tolerance. Even though I took off a little bit of material, uh, it still needs to fit in the track. So. Just trying to get a feel for how quick this stuff starts to cure, set up, or whatever gets to the point where you can't move it around anymore without making a big mess. Wow, that little bit of pigment. This is definitely not the color I want, but I'll fix that later. 
Um, way too dark. Okay, well it's been 24 hours since I did this and uh, the foam coat is uh, completely cured and uh, I'm actually uh, really, really impressed. This stuff is very, very rigid. So, uh, yeah, it uh, came out good other than the color because it looks like a piece of dark chocolate. Um, that's okay. Um, so all I did after uh, I put the coat on at the end of the, the, the last uh, clip, um, I did go and brush, uh, just a wet brush with water and kind of smooth this out a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, came out good. I'm really, really impressed. It is uh, very, very strong. And then I said, well, what's it look like without any pigment in it? And so I did this piece. And this is, it's, it's, it's uh, hard as a rock. So um, that's great. So I will actually um, basically go ahead and do the Woodland Scenics thing and get the, uh, earth tone on there and get some uh, I might even do some static grass I haven't played with that yet either so um, anyway foam coat from hot wire foam factory is awesome uh, I just ordered a 25 pound um, box of it so I should be able to get the outside of turn one the big high bank with the lights on it and um, probably most of it. Um, I was really surprised. That piece and that piece took a three pound jar uh, of it. I think it was like nine dollars or something. So it, it sounds like a lot of weight um, as far as the mix goes, um, but the cost, um, nothing. Uh, and, and the ease of working with this versus the plaster wow this is so much easier to work with the cleanup is so much simpler um, yeah I'm I'm uh, not a hundred percent sold on it yet but I'm like 99 percent sold on it so we'll see how it how it takes to the the actual um, um, the woodland scenic stuff so I, I probably want to start getting that that out and uh, oh boy uh, those are more pigments and uh, yes there are all of the turfs and all that stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video off because that's the end of my um, steps for for doing foam which is we cut then we glued um, layers of foam together then we sculpted it and then we coated it so we'll do some more um, stuff and I'll film some more more uh, um, footage on, on doing the big pieces but that's it for the foam uh, part one hopefully that was helpful and I'll leave links to hot wire foam factory and uh, anything else that I used. Anyway, let me know if you like this or if you have any questions. Leave them in the comments below. Be safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.